Hello and welcome to today's webinar, an introduction to jobs, timesheet and expense management in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. My name is Gemma Warren and I'm the project manager for Advantage Business Systems. Some of the functionality that you see here, such as timesheets and jobs, is standard in Dynamics NAV 2013. Expense management, however, has been developed specifically by Advantage Business Systems for the professional services industry. In Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013, I am logged in currently as the role center for the resource manager. My shortcuts show my resources, jobs, and timesheets that are relevant for the resource manager. Let's first look at the setups of resources. We'll need to ensure that we set up resources before we can actually set up jobs. A resource in Microsoft Dynamics NAV can be a machine or a person. Here we can filter by the resources that are people or the resources that are machines. Let's look at our resource card for Linda Martin. We can see that Linda Martin has a base unit of measure to be charged per hour. We can also see the timesheet owner and timesheet prover here. Linda Martin, when created as a resource for use on particular jobs, can also claim expense claims. Therefore, we've created Linda as a vendor as well as an associated employee, so we can capture not only expense claim management and pay out during our backs feed. The associated employee number allows us to capture any absences or holidays that are coming up for Linda in the human resources module. We can also set a direct cost for Linda, a particular profit and a unit price. We also know that Linda has a general posting group of services as she is used to provide most of the consulting services. We can capture some additional personal data for Linda here. If we navigate to the associated employee number for Linda, we are also able to view any qualifications that she may have. This helps us to assign the correct resources in the correct area with the correct qualifications to a particular job. Now that we have the setups for the resources, and these are linked automatically to the employees and their related vendor cards, we can now review the resourcing planning. If I navigate to the departments and resource planning menu, I'm able to view the resource capacity. Let's view the resource capacity by month for Linda. We can see that Linda does not have any capacity up until January 2014. This has not been set yet. However, from January 2014, we can see the capacity that Linda has available. If we drill down into this capacity, we can see the number of hours per day that are available for Linda. Now that we know we have resources and capacity, let's create a new job. In my jobs menu, I can see a list of jobs that already exist. Let's edit the on-site consulting job and show the lines for this job. On this job card, we can see the person responsible and also the approval type. If the approval type is by line, there will be an approver for each line that Linda submits. However, if the approval type is by project, there will be an overall project approver that will go to a single manager. We can see the start and end dates for this job as well as the creation dates. We can also view any work in progress and recognition of any costs that have been posted to the general ledger. Once the job is created, the job will need some task lines. Let's see what tasks are associated with this job. We see that there's a first visit to meet the financial controller, installation of the software and testing of the connection. We can see the start and end dates and also the scheduled costs for these related tasks. 
we can see what has already been invoiced and what is still to invoice. Under the job planning lines, we can see the different resources connected to the job tasks. Currently, the job planning lines are sorted by job number and job task number. We can remove the filter to job task number to show all task lines. We can see all three task lines are related to Linda Martin and we can view the quantity in hours that has been assigned to Linda. Now that we know Linda has had to go out to the client to do the initial setups and testing, let's create a timesheet for this. We can select a timesheet, the start date and the number of periods that we wish to create for. We can also create timesheets from the job planning lines. I'm going to use the filter for Linda and the type for a person. You can see that the timesheets have been created. Let's view the timesheets. Timesheets are created for a week period, 8th of July to the 14th of July and the 15th of July to the 21st of July. Let's choose to edit the first timesheet. This would be where Linda would log in and edit her timesheets. Linda would be able to review the job tasks that have taken place and assign the number of hours that she has spent on each of these tasks. Linda can also enter additional lines if necessary. For example, Linda can enter an absence on her timesheet. Let's say, for example, Linda was sick for a half day on Monday. Any timesheet lines that are related to a job and a job task number will have the relevant job and job task number shown. Linda can now submit these lines. She can choose to submit all lines or only selected lines. For this I will select all lines. The status is now changed to submitted. Linda's manager will then log in and review the manager timesheet section under resource planning. Linda's manager is able to see that there are two timesheets available for Linda and that one has been submitted. Linda's manager will choose to review the timesheet and accept or reject all or any one of the lines. Let's approve this timesheet. I can approve all submitted lines or selected lines only. The status is now changed to approved. With this timesheet now approved, we're able to change the work in progress and costing against the jobs. So we can now bill our customer for the work that has been done. Let's navigate to the job. Let's review the job planning lines. And let's create the sales invoice for the relevant job planning lines. This is the invoice for the customer. I can choose to create a new invoice or append this to an already existing invoice. I will create a new invoice. I could choose to bill selected lines or one line at a time. This will depend on how you would like to bill your customer and also how you would like to display your work in progress. I've created the sales invoice just for the one line. Let's now look at our work in progress recognition. We can see that we've already got a work in progress sale GL amount of £100. The sales amount that we've just created in a sales invoice has not yet been posted. The whip will not show until the sales invoice is posted. Let's review that sales invoice. The sales invoice for the resource of Linda Martin 
a quantity of 2.5 hours at the unit price of £10. We're now ready to post this invoice and send it to the customer. That invoice has now been posted to the general ledger. Let's look at our job card again. On the job card, I can now calculate the work in progress. Let's calculate the WIP for this job. Work in progress is successfully calculated. I can see now I have a sales amount of £125 and a cost amount of £50.40. I've not yet posted this to the GL. I can choose to post my WIP to the GL at any point in time, whether I do this now or after I've invoiced all of my job lines. Let's say, for example, that Linda had to claim mileage to travel to the on-site consulting job. To create an expense claim, this can be carried out under the resource planning menu. Linda's manager can create resource expense claims in the same way that you create resource timesheets. Let's create resource expense claims for two weeks from the 8th of July. Again, we'll filter this just for Linda Martin. Linda will be able to view her resource expense claims. Linda may have several expense claims, so she can filter these values. Let's look at the expense claim for the 8th of July. Linda can now enter the expense claims for the relevant day and the relevant job that she carried out the work on. The financial controller has set up various expense categories for Linda. Linda is going to choose mileage. She can enter a description that will help the manager with timesheet and expense approval. We can also see in the resource expense categories that these are either chargeable or non-chargeable expenses. Some of our expenses we may be able to reclaim back from our customer. Linda had to travel miles at a rate of 45p per mile. The amount that Linda paid out was £3.50. However, the total amount that is rechargeable will be £4.50, calculated from 10 miles at the mileage rate. We can see the status of this expense claim line is currently open. Let's submit this to the manager. You'll also note that we can put comments against our entire expense claim or against the line if we'd like to add additional information. Once submitted, the status changes to submitted. Linda's manager can now review the resource expense claim and any documentation that she has attached or sent through. The manager can filter to view only Linda's expenses and can view the individual expense claim. The manager can review and approve this expense claim. There is also the ability to import expense claims from different systems. For example, credit card statements. Let's look at that job once again. In our job card, we can now look at the job expenses. We can view the expenses with the relevant comments and whether they're chargeable, made up of mileage, different rates, and whether they have VAT applied to them we can see that there is still a quantity to invoice 
and the quantity that is being transferred to the invoice. The 2.5 transferred to the invoice already and invoiced was the sales invoice for the job time that was completed in her timesheets. We now have the option to recharge the resource expenses to the customer and to also reimburse the resource expense to the individual employee. If we recharge the expense to the customer, the expenses are recharged to that particular customer number for that job number. If we scroll to the right, we're able to view the recharge number. This is the sales invoice number. Let's reimburse the resource expense to the employee. Currently we can see we've not reimbursed Linda for the mileage. Clicking reimburse resource expense to employee will create the purchase invoice against the vendor card that is linked to that resource card for Linda Martin. We can now process our payment journal and any additional payments that are meant to be made to Linda will be shown up within our payment journal. Let's now calculate the WIP on our job card once again. Now let's post that WIP to the GL. We can see the cost posted to the GL has been updated. Thank you for your time today. I hope you've enjoyed this brief webinar. We will be launching a series of tips and tricks as well as additional webinars. Please feel free to ask any questions at this point in time. And I do hope you will join us for additional webinars.